Allah Azza wa Jal, the Almighty, the Exalted, bless this Ummah by giving them seasons through which they can expiate their sins, during which they can exert extra efforts in worshiping Him and obtain higher rewards. Seasons of virtue and righteousness by means of which the slaves draws nearer to Allah the Almighty. And the successful and blessed one indeed is the one who utilizes these seasons and takes maximum or utilizes them to the maximum of his ability. And one such season is the one that we're going through right now, the first 10 days of Dhul Hijjah, which is not over yet. So the opportunity is still there. The chance is still there for us to invest in the season. It is enough virtue for these days that Allah the Almighty swore by them saying walayalin ashr and by meaning and i swear by the ten nights ibn abbas radiyallahu anhu and others said these ten nights are the nights of the ten the first ten days of the hijjah the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam testified that these ten days are the best days of the world, as he stated. Al-Bazzar reported, and it was classified as authentic by Al-Albani, that the Prophet ﷺ said, خَيْرُ أَيَّامِ الدُّنْيَا الْعَشْرِ The best days of the world are the ten days, these ten days. And he was addressing the companions radiyallahu anhum, during that season. And therefore, he sallallahu alayhi wa sallam encouraged us to abundantly perform acts of worship. Singling these days out from all the days of the year. In the book of Imam al-Bukhari, he sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, there are no days during which acts of worship, righteous deeds are dearer to Allah Azza wa Jal than these ten, meaning the ten days of the Hijjah. So the companions asked, not even performing jihad for the sake of Allah and the rank of jihad in Islam is high. As a matter of fact, it is the highest rank in Islam, as in the book of Imam al-Bukhari. It is the peak. The Prophet ﷺ said, the peak rank in Islam is jihad. Yet, he ﷺ, when answering this question said, not even jihad. Except in one case, he said. Except for one person who goes to jihad with his wealth, and his body and none of these return meaning he gets martyred and his wealth is all spent for the sake of Allah. This is amongst the prophetic directives to the Ummah when he was cultivating them, directing them, instructing them how to come closer to Allah Azza wa Jal. He is bringing to our attention Highlighting the fact that Allah Azza wa Jal made these seasons in the life of the Muslim as an opportunity and a chance. And that the Muslim must take advantage of them, react positively with them in a way that results in a serious, actual change in his style in his lifestyle, 
in his performance, in his reaction to the instructions of Allah and his messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Ibn Taymiyyah, rahmatullah alayhi, said, the 10 days, the first 10 days of Dhul Hijjah are better than all these in the year, including Ramadan. Ibn al-Qayyim commenting on this, he says this reflects deep knowledge of Ibn Taymiyyah. Because these 10 days have in them things or days which do not exist in any other day or period or season of the year. They have Arafah. Before Arafah, you have the day of Tarwiyah, the eighth. And you have the day of slaughter, and Nahr, the day when the pilgrims offer the sacrificial animal for those who perform Tamattu or Quran types of Hajj. Ibn Hajar, Rahmatullah alayhi, said, the reason this period is so distinct and singled out by Allah Azza wa Jal is that a believer performs these major acts of worship which he cannot perform collectively except during them, such as Hajj, slaughtering, the day of Nahr, that is, and Udhiyah for non pilgrims and pilgrims. It's a very controversial if, uh, issue. The scholars differ in opinion whether or not a pilgrim uh, offers an Udhiyah. But nonetheless, an Udhiyah is offered by non pilgrims. In addition to many other acts of verse, examples for acts of worship that a person needs to perform abundantly in order to be utilizing this season to its optimum. The first and foremost is salah. Salah, prayer. Because see the prayer as the Prophet ﷺ described it, is the spinal cord of one's faith. If your spinal cord is broke, you're paralyzed. So if one's salat is broke, is neglected, is not as Allah Azza wa Jal wants, he is jeopardizing his faith to be or to become broken, to paralyze himself in faith. And that's why one is encouraged to abundantly perform optional prayers. In the book of Imam al-Bukhari, in a Qudsi narration, Allah Azza wa Jal says, and my slave continues to offer optional acts of worship for my sake until I love him. And what more would a believer want after Allah loves him? When instructing one of the companions about something that would benefit him and rescue him on the day of judgment, he said, sujood. I advise you to abundantly prostrate to Allah, meaning pray. Because he said, never that you prostrate once to Allah Azza wa Jal, except that Allah Azza wa Jal expiates a sin and elevates you one rank. And this is reported by an Imam Muslim. Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen wa salatu wa salamu ala khatam al-anbiya'i wal mursaleen Sayyidina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in wa ba'd. Another act of worship one need to, needs to be keen on performing during these 10 days is fasting. In the book of Imam Muslim and Bukhari, the Prophet وسلم, narrates on behalf of his Lord in a Qudsi narration that Allah said, fasting is for me. 
and I shall reward for it. Sheikh al Uthaymeen said a beautiful comment about this narration. He said the fact that the reward of fasting is with Allah Azza wa Jal implies that if a fasting slave has wronged someone and must be taken justice from for the favor of the wronged one and the wronged one has to take from his rewards they will take from his rewards from all his rewards except for the reward of fasting that is going to be preserved and remain intact without being touched and when Allah Azza wa Jal does not disclose the reward, as the scholar said, it reflects the abundance of that reward. Al Imam al Nawawi, Rahmatullah alayhi, he said, It is extremely recommended to fast the entire nine days of the feast. Of course, we can't fast the tenth because it's eight. But the ninth day, has a particular reward as reported by an Imam Muslim. He said, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, the reward of fasting the day of Arafah expiates the year before and the year after. So it expiates two years by fasting a single day, just one day entitles the slave, he or she, to this great reward of expiation of two years of sins in this case. Another act of worship which Allah Azza wa Jal encouraged the believers to perform is to give sadaqah. Ya ayyuhal ladheena amanu anfiqu mimma razaqnaakum O you who have believed, spend from that which we have given you. It's a reminder in addition to an encouragement. It's a reminder that that wealth which you possess in your hand is nothing but wealth from Allah. It's not yours. You really are not the owner. It is from Allah. From what we have given you. Before a day comes when there will be no benefit of trade, kinship, and intercession. The Prophet وسلم, in order to further encourage the believers, put their hearts ease and rest because the nature of mankind is that he panics when it comes to wealth. He holds back, he's stingy. Why? He plans ahead, so he believes, right? So the Prophet ﷺ puts the hearts and the minds to ease and rest, saying, on behalf of Allah Azza wa Jalla, and this is reported by Muslim, Yabna Adam, anfiq unfiq alayk. You spend and I'll provide you. No worries. Don't say 10 minus 5 equals 5. No. Not in Islam. Not when it comes to charity. 10 minus 5 equals 300, uh, 3,500, 700 multiples. This is the, the number that was fixed. But Allah Azza wa Jalla Wallahu yudha'ifu li yasha. And Allah multiplies more for, for whomever He wishes. Right? So in Islam, 10 minus 5 equals 3,500. 5 times 700. And he, alayhi salatu was salam, and this is also reported by Muslim, again puts the mind and heart to ease, saying, Ma naqasat sadaqatu minna. Cherry does not decrease your wealth. You think it is this minus this equals this? No, it doesn't, because it will not reduce. How does this work? One may ask. Well, it does not necessarily mean that it will be 3,500. And it could be because Allah Azza wa said that as a reward. And it happened in real life. We've seen this and experienced it many, many times. More than it can enumerate it. But one factor that many people miss out on 
is that there is something called barakah. Barakah. Blessings. Allah puts blessing in that which remains with you. You need a thousand dollars to live on, for example, a thousand pounds to live on, for example, and you spend 300, so you're left with 700. Allah puts barakah in the 700 when it suffices you and you have leftovers as well. It's just amazing when you work with Allah how things work out. But at the same time, there's a stern warning against holding back and not spending. Allah, is, the, the Prophet ﷺ was addressing Asma, and this is reported by an Imam Muslim. He said, Oh Asma, spend and don't count. Meaning, don't start counting. Should I spend a dollar, two, a pound, two, or what I do, and don't hold back. Don't count and don't hold back. Otherwise, Allah will hold back from providing. You, you directly affect your provisions by holding back in something. Another act of worship is uttering dhikr. Particularly, Allahu Akbar, La ilaha illallah, and Alhamdulillah. In the book of the Imam Ahmad, and it was classified as authentic by Al Arma'ut, the Prophet ﷺ said, There are no days that are more beloved to Allah and greater in the sight of Allah. There are no days that are greater in the sight of Allah and during which acts of worship are dearer to Allah except these 10 days. So abundantly utter Allahu Akbar, La ilaha illallah, and Alhamdulillah. Another narration which gives us glad tidings. It's a beautiful narration. The Prophet, وسلم, and this is reported by Al Tabarani and classified as sound by Al Albani. The Prophet said, ما أهل مهل قط ولا كبر مكبر قط إلا بشر بالجنة. Never that a person utters لا إله إلا الله or الله أكبر except that he will be given glad tidings of entering Jannah. Subhanallah. That's why Abu Huraira and Ibn Umar, as reported by Al Bukhari, used to go out. And utter aloud takbir and la ilaha illallah. Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, la ilaha illallah, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar. And they would say it aloud. They would go to the markets and say it aloud. And people will also utter takbir and la ilaha illallah. So a believer is encouraged during these 10 days to utter these types of dhikr, Allahu Akbar, La ilaha illallah, and Alhamdulillah according to the first narration, a lot, as much as he can. And don't restrict that to after salah. This is a general, this is called al-dhikr al-mutlaq, al-takbir al-mutlaq. This is the general, unrestricted type of takbir. There are too many acts of worship a believer can perform during these days, recite the Quran, Qiyam al layl and so on. But these are acts of worship about which specific prophetic narrations were recorded, but without the foundation for acceptance. One is risking these acts of worship being rejected by Allah. Before all of that, a prerequisite is to sincerely repent to Allah. Rectify your affairs. Reform your relationship with Allah. 
sincerely repent to Allah Azza wa Jal and don't persist on your sins because persistence on the sin jeopardizes the chance of acceptance and subjects the believer to being rejected by Allah Azza wa Jal. Brothers, sisters, we have the sixth, which is today, seventh, eighth, ninth, and tenth. We still have five full days. We still have time and we are alive. So the chance is still there to take advantage of what's left. If, we've, if we have neglected the first ten, if we fell short in the first, first four, uh, five, rather, not ten, the first five of the ten, then the chance is still here. The opportunity is there to take advantage of. Let us invest in these days as we set forth for the hereafter. Let us repent to Allah Azza wa Let's turn to Him with sincerity. Let's try to gain His love. Hatta uhibba. Remember the narration mentioned in the beginning? Until I love Him. Let's try to earn this love. Because once He loves you, everything goes in the right direction. You only look at what He wants, as in the narration. You only utter what He likes. You only hear or listen to, rather, what He is pleased with. You only walk and use your hands in matters of His pleasure. And this in itself is paradise on earth. When your life is nothing but nearness to Allah, the love of Allah Azza wa Jal engulfs you from all directions, what else do you want? What else would any believer want? We ask Allah Azza wa Jal to enable us to utilize these days and to help us perform as much acts of worship as possible. We ask Him to enable us to draw nearer to Him. We ask Him to enable us to earn and gain His love. We ask Him subhanahu wa ta'ala to facilitate acts of worship for us in a way that entitles us to be admitted into Jannah. Allahumma amin. Oh Allah, we ask you to reform our hearts. We ask you to enable us to repent to you before the moment of death. And we ask you to enable us to utter la ilaha illallah at the moment of death. And we ask you for your mercy after our death.